Les, if you would go ahead and uh, put that slide up there that has the title of the message. Uh, these were my favorite part of the services when I was a kid growing up because when the pastor said, let us pray, I translated that to, it is finished. <laughs> and that meant that I was going to be able to leave and uh, that, that may make me very, maybe not a very good Christian, but that's really the way it was. But don't get excited. It's not finished yet. We're just now getting started with the message part. But uh, last week, if you'll remember, we, we talked about humility. And this week, we're going to follow that up with an expression of humility, which is always pray. Every time we pray, it's an expression of humility, whether it's like Peter's prayer, you know, that three-word prayer that he prayed when he was sinking in the water. Lord, help me. Even something as elegant as that too. Lord, I need food, shelter, and clothing. Uh, Lord, I need courage for today or Maybe, Lord, calm me down. Whatever form of those prayers. This morning, we're going to be talking about extensively about Lord, lead us. You know, we're at a time in our church now that uh, the, the, the uh, search for a real pastor has begun. And so uh, we're, we're going to all be participants that, in that, and we'll talk about that. I have four points to say about prayer, Les, if you'll go to the next, next slide. And this will help you gauge, you know, well, not that one, but the next one that gives an outline. No, before that, before that, go backwards. Go backwards, go backwards. You have to slide that says today's outline. No, backwards, backwards, backwards. You're going way down the bottom. Yeah, you can just cancel out. All right, go again. See what we have. <laughs> anyway, there, there are four points, and whether you know them or not, I do. And so uh, they're right here in my notes. Can you see that from where you're sitting? <laughs> but uh, the reason, uh, you know, I give you the four points so you can know when we're getting close to it is finished. But uh, <laughs> so, uh, uh, so you won't wear out before the end. When I was in seminary, uh, one of the churches in town hosted a man named E.M. Bounds. To speak, it was on a Sunday night. My roommates and I all went. And uh, when we went to hear him speak, he was speaking about prayer. He had written a book called Power Through Prayer. And I'd actually already written the book. I had already read the book. And so I was, frankly, sitting there kind of smugly. Yeah, I already know what he's going to say. I'm already doing all that. But when he stood up to talk, he said, Tonight I'm going to be talking about prayer. But not the kind of prayer that you do while you're driving down the highway. Well, instantly he interrupted my smugness because at that time I was driving 50 miles back and forth to the campus where I was serving on in, in Mesquite from Fort Worth. And I was using that time as my prayer time. And so I thought I was all prayed up and doing good. But when he did that, he said, no, I'm not talking about the kind of prayer we do multitasking prayer. I'm talking about the kind of prayer is when you go to your closet and you shut the door and you pray to our Father in secret. And so I said, okay, maybe I better pay attention after all. And I got my notebook out and I started taking notes. And uh, he was right. I wasn't nearly where I needed to be in my prayer life. And in fact, today I'm not either. But I'm still getting there. I'm still going that direction. So uh, we're going to be talking about that this morning. Our first point to prayer is it was Jesus' habit to pray. Last week, remember Paul directed us, directed our attention to the example of Jesus. When he said, treat one another in a humble way, he said, here's the example. And he talked about Jesus being that example. And we have to go no further than the very first chapter of the book of Mark when we see introduced there the very pattern of Jesus' prayer life. Mark 1.35 says, And in the morning, rising up a great while before day. Sorry, school kids. Rising up a, very, a great while before day, he went out and departed, here's the key word, to a solitary place. And there he prayed. It was his pattern. How many of you saw the movie, wasn't it last fall, War Room came out? Was that when that was? Yeah, I saw that movie. And uh, that's what that, that whole movie was about, wasn't it? Having not only a place in your home for prayer, but a place in our lives for prayer. And so uh, Jesus is the pattern. And as you go through, Mark, I don't know if any of you remember, I mean, I've slept since then too, but back in December, uh, the very first Sunday that I was with you guys, uh, 
uh, I could give you a pop test and ask you what the title of my message was, but I believe I'm the one that would be uh, humbled by that. But uh, the message title was Just Press Pause. And it was talking about this very thing, beginning our days, our routines. And I've already told you, my wife is so serious about doing that first that she won't even drink coffee yet until she's had her prayer time. I'm not near the Christian that Kelly is yet. But uh, it was Jesus' pattern to do that. Les, can you get any of those slides up there at all? Let's, uh, let's go to the one that has Luke 6, 12 through 13 in it, if you would. There you go. Good. Thank you. So Jesus' pattern was prayer. Did it every day. Did it routinely. And as you read through the book of Mark, you can see he did that over and over and over again. But, there's also a time, and I'm going to go to Luke uh, for this passage, because, you know, big things call on big prayer. And Jesus was facing a huge decision the next morning. And he didn't dare. And just think about this now. If Jesus needed to pray, how much more so do I need to pray? And so here he, he knows the future in present tense. He's one with the Father, and yet the night before, he was to choose from 70, 12 men who would go with him for the next three years. 12 men with whom would lie the, uh, the very life of the church that he was planting. And so what did he do that night? Well, it's right here. Let's read that together. Is that font large enough? You can read that from where you are, can't you? I'll read it from my sheet of paper, okay? One of those days, Jesus went out to a mountainside to pray and spent the night. He pulled an all-nighter. He spent the night praying to God. And only after that would he go and choose. When the morning came, he called his disciples to him, chose 12. He chose, chose 12 of them whom he designated the sent out ones, the apostles. And we are in a process very similar to that, are we not? Now, uh, we won't be choosing 12. Last, last Sunday, we chose seven from among us to uh, not delegate the responsibility, but to do the footwork on the process through which we will go as we discern our next pastor. But we're all participants in that. So, and I know many of you, I heard, I saw the evidence that many of you had prayed about that. And you knew when you came last Sunday morning who you we're already going to choose to be our pastor search committee. And so uh, we've done that. You, you did that prayerfully. I saw you do that. Actually, we did it this time for months, didn't we? Before we even got that, before we even chose that committee. But we're just following the, uh, the example of Jesus there. But he, uh, for a big thing, he knew it called on big prayer, even quantitatively. And that's one of the things that, that we, uh, we encourage all of our interns working in Baptist student ministry around the state, we, we encourage them to take a work day a month, take a day off from work every month, and to spend a half a day or a whole day with God in prayer. And uh, we even give them some training on how, how do you do that? How do you even spend a whole day with God or even a half day? How, what do you even do? How do? What does that look like? We train them, and then we encourage them on our time Take a day every month to spend extended time with the Lord in prayer. So big things, call them big prayer. And Jesus modeled that for us magnificent, magnificently. Number three, we're at point number three already. Are you feeling good about it? Okay, we're already on point three. Luke 10, 2. It's really interesting to me that that's the reference for this passage. We pray it every year, all year long as we pray for laborers for the next year, because in the work that I'm a part of, you know, we have interns, college graduates, who stay and work in our ministries around the state. Most of them stay for a year or two, and so that's a carousel that's going through. So we are always praying Luke 10, 2. And you're familiar with the passage. It's when Jesus saw the city of Jerusalem, and uh, he told the disciples, Luke 10, 2, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers, the workers are few. In King James it says, Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send 
labors into the harvest. That's our prayer, is it not? As you know, I know that you know traditionally in Baptist churches we call the group of people that we elected last week the Pastor Search Committee, and that's a great term. That's a, that's an okay title. In my mind, though, there's there's some implications about that that uh, that are not true, because the Pastor Search Committee title implies that they are to go on a search. And they're supposed to ask for resumes. And then they search through and read through those. And then it's as if the job is up to them to find the guy. But really, why is that, why is that an improper assumption? God's the Lord of the harvest. And if we think that he doesn't know we need a pastor, well, we're kidding ourselves. And so this is his church, and we are his flock. And Del Rio is his field that is ripe and ready for harvest. And that's why Jesus told them to do what? Pray to the Lord of the harvest. And so in our prayer, between now and then, you know, one of these days, a new pastor will stand before you. But you know what? Today, he already knows who that is. And that's the kind of confidence, the kind of ease. It's not a frantic search like the lady searching her house for the lost coin or, the, or for the sheep that's gone astray. It's not that kind of a search. It's a very restful Lord of the harvest. You know the field. You know the flock. And you know who will stand before us. And so we're going to watch. My title, preferred title for that group of people, would be the pastor discernment team. That our, our primary job is to be discerning along the way we're really God you show us who you picked not let's go find somebody good show us who you've already picked and that's the process that they will follow and that's in direct obedience to this very verse same thing that Jesus told them that day he tells us today and so we will we will, we are, we're praying to the Lord of the harvest. In a few minutes, I'm going to give us three different ways that we can do that. Praying to the Lord of the harvest that he will send the laborer. Let's see here. You know, let's, let me just go ahead and say something. You know, um, I enjoy being with you guys. Even on a rainy Sunday morning, the trip to, San Antonio, to, to Del Rio from San Antonio is not burdensome to me. And uh, I, I kind of enjoy it. It's kind of therapeutic, to tell you the truth. And uh, uh, so I, I very much enjoy being with you. I'm honored to play the role that you've called on me to play this, these months. But, you know, um, I can also hold you back. Because when folks see, oh, they're looking for a pastor, well, there are going to be some folks who are saying, well, I'm not going to get in that wagon and tell him I know which horse they're going to hit you to. And so, uh, you know, I can hold you back as much as anything. Now, I... Don't think we're at that point. The deacons may meet this afternoon and decide that we are and uh, change that plan. But, uh, you know, I'm very, very comfortable and confident and thankful and honored to play this role with you. But it is a temporary role. And, uh, you know, that, that could hold some folks back. And it, could, it would come today that I would be the only thing standing between you and the, the next pastor, the real pastor. I, I can use that word, the real one. But uh, anyway, that we were in that process, but it's not frantic. And we're not panic, all in a panic. We're not all in a huff. We're already okay. We're okay. We're, we're complete. And we're not waiting for a next chapter in order to untrack. No, we're already going. We're already going. And we're going fine. Okay, number four. Fourth point, if you can get that next passage on there from Luke, also Luke 22. This was way toward the end of Jesus' ministry. It was the night, it was on the night that he was arrested. We've read the story and looked at it before many times. He and his disciples went out to one of their regular prayer places where they did. And uh, then this is the prayer, this is what happened. You can follow along. There with me as I read. Jesus went out as usual. It was his pattern still to the Mount of Olives, and his disciples followed him. On reaching the place, he said to them, and I think this is what he's saying to us, pray 
that you'll not fall into temptation. He told them, pray. He withdrew about a stone's throw beyond them. You know, however far you can throw a rock, he went on further. And he knelt and prayed. Again, if Jesus needs to pray, how much more so do I? How much more so do we? And this was his prayer. And you talk about a picture of humility expressed in this posture of prayer. Father, if you're willing, take this cup from me. But then this next key statement, yet not my will, but yours be done. And that's really, is it not so fitting? So all of this matches where we are as a church family today. Lord, we're not, we don't have a will for our church, but we know you do. And we are giving you the reins. And we, we are letting you lead us. And our primary job is to discern. Well, look what happened. You know, Jesus went away, the stones threw away. When he rose from prayer and went back to the disciples, look what he found. He found them asleep, exhausted from sorrow. Why are you sleeping? He asked them. Get up and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. You know, last Sunday we did. We nominated a group of people who will be doing the footwork as we discern the next pastor. But you know what? We didn't delegate the job to you guys who are serving on that team. Not delegated at all. Because our role with you in this, in this meanwhile is as active as your role. Because our role is to hold you guys up in prayer as you are doing the footwork of this process for us. And we dare not fall asleep in the meanwhile that we would stay as actively involved in the discerning process as you are. And that way, we, we have a great deal of confidence, don't we? Isn't prayer the big confidence builder? Hey, when, when I've spent one of those half days or all days with prayer, it's like, whew, what was I so stressed out about? <laughs> and as we pray the, the weeks and the months that come, you know, our confidence is in the Lord. And you guys who are serving on that team will be the subject of our prayer support from now to then. So we're, we're not like, okay, you guys go do it fast and come report back and let us know who it is. No, we will be very actively, all of us, very actively uh, engaged with you the whole time. So, don't feel dumpigated on. We have not. We are walking with you from our prayer closets, from our war rooms, and we're praying with you guys as you read resumes and visit together and and uh, discern carefully and patiently uh, who our next pastor will be. Let's just go ahead and go to that next uh, slide there, if you would. It's the one that says threefold prayer strategy. No, not that one. Is, do you have one that says threefold prayer strategy? Uh-oh. Uh, I told you you need a new pastor. <laughs> okay, uh, it's, it's right here. Can you see this <laughs> from here where you're sitting? We, we did have some mix-ups with our, our transfer of the PowerPoint this morning. That's why we've been kind of confused. Okay, here's the three-fold prayer strategy that I'm proposing for us this morning. Okay, number one, and each of these begins with the word every. Every Sunday, for however long it takes, one of the pastor discernment team members will come and lead us in a prayer here from, from the front of us, from all of us, uh, as, as we pray together corporately. Because as important as our closet, as our private prayer is, it's also important, is it not, for us to pray together about this thing. So every Sunday, beginning next Sunday, then one of those Pastor discernment team members will come and lead us in prayer. And that will just prompt us all, prompt us all to keep on praying as they lead us in prayer. You'll see them praying, and then we'll be praying, and then we'll all be 
bien tranquilos. We will all be patient and we'll all be uh, relaxed as, uh, as this process continues. And here's the interesting thing to me. I couldn't have made this up. Next Sunday is October the 2nd, 10-2. Luke 10-2 is the very verse that, that we looked at a while ago. Pray to the Lord of the harvest that he will send a laborer. You know, the Matthew version of that same passage uses the word that we like so much, shepherd. He saw the, the people as sheep without a shepherd. I don't see you that way. But, we, you know, that really is the role of pastor. In fact, that is the word for pastor in Spanish, shepherd. You know, even the word for German shepherd. Know what it is in Spanish? Pastor alemán. Yeah, German pastor. And German shepherd. And so Luke 10 to is the very verse that will be the anchor for us as we pray. And we'll begin, you know, praying from the, from the podium here every Sunday on 10-2. I just think that's cool. I kind of like the way that worked out. And again, that would have been real hard for me to manipulate, wouldn't it? It would have been pretty hard. All right, here's the next one. Threefold prayer strategy. Each Sunday, every Sunday, we'll be praying corporately together. And then I want everyone, everyone in our church family, um, including those who aren't here today, to pick one. Everyone pick one. Now you can show that slide that has all those handsome pictures. There they are. Look at those guys. It's interesting to me how many of those have supporting cast members with them in the photo. And uh, I just stole your pictures off Facebook, guys. And uh, in fact, um, I, you know, I come up with stuff during the week and I'm not here. And so I didn't go to the trouble to call each of you. So if it's not okay for your phone number to be uh, there on the screen uh, for all of us. You can just tell me afterward and I'll apologize. <laughs> but uh, here, uh, the reason that I've put the phone numbers of all these folks is because not everybody knows everybody for one thing. But uh, let's go back to the one that still has the picture. I wasn't over that one yet. I, I enjoyed seeing, seeing all those pictures. And also, you know, there are two of those who aren't even here today, so uh, you can see those. But here's what I want you to do, right where you're, you are right now. Everybody, you ready? Pick one. Everybody pick one. And pick one of those that you want to be, you know, for the weeks and the months ahead, that that will be your one. You know, so are you like me? If I say, I'm, okay, I'm going to pray f for everything, I'll end up praying for nothing. But if each of us picks one, everybody picks one. And then think of the confidence if you were serving on this team, you know, what that would do for you, knowing that there are folks praying for me through this process. That means a lot to me. And so everyone do that right now. Pick one of those handsome fellers right there. And uh, to be the, the one for whom you will be praying through this whole process. See, not dumpagated. This is still a team process. We're all doing this together. And uh, our, our prayer will continue. So everyone, pick one. And uh, the reason I put their phone numbers up there, you know, we all have phones, don't we? You know, got one right here. And uh, you may even want to go ahead and put the phone number of that individual whom you've picked in your phone and just text them every once in a while. Hey, just wanted you to know, and I'm so glad to be praying for you and praying for all the committee, but I'm specifically praying. I've picked you, and I'll be praying for you through this whole process. And so you can go ahead and uh, put their phone number in your phone and just send them a text every once in a while. Let them know that you're praying for them. Okay, that's two of the three. What's the last of the three-part or the threefold prayer strat strategy? It's this. Um, do you have the slide that has that strategy on there? Did I already ask that, Les? Yeah. Eh, okay. All right. This is the third point. This is our third way that we're going to all be participants together. Luke ten two prompts us and our staff sets our alarm to go off at 
every day. I used to have mine go off at 10.02 a.m. And inevitably, I would be in some meeting and my alarm would go off. But, you know, I've, this is not my first day on earth. I, I came up with a few ideas. I decided, duh, why do it at 10.02 a.m.? Do it at 10.02 p.m. I'm not often in a meeting at 10.02 p.m. And what I did on Tuesday of this week is uh, I, I actually put it on my calendar. You know, we live, you know, in such uh, incredible days uh, technolo technologically. And I, I put it on my calendar, and I did the repeat. If y'all know how to do all that, you know, repeating event. And this event repeats every single day. And at 10.02 p.m. now, instead of a.m., I get a prompter. My phone goes, bing, <laughs> at 10.02 in the middle of the news. And it reminds me, pray for our pastor discernment team members. And so what if we do that, all, all of us do that every day? You, you may not need a prompter like that. You may just be so mindful of good things that you'll remember anyway. I need the prompter. And so every day, every night this week when my phone has binged me, I thought, okay, here we go. I'm praying for our pastor discernment team. And I've been praying for you guys this week. And I, I like the prompter. I really do. So how does that feel to you guys? You know, uh, we're not going to have a formal business meeting. Our business meeting leader man is sick this morning. Tommy is out. But here's what I would like to do. That, that I will ask you that we would commit... In these ways, you know, every Sunday praying uh, for one another. And everyone picking one, specific one to pray for. And then everyone praying every day. And if 10.02, because it's Luke 10.02 that we're praying, if that helps you, helps me, then do that way too. And so I'm going ha to take an informal vote. If you're in favor of us embarking on this journey as a prayer journey together. Just wave to me right where you are. I thought you would. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know what? I think prayer is a good thing. And so let us pray these weeks and months that we'll all be participants. And guess what? The Lord of the harvest is the one who has the plan. And every day, and every Sunday when we pray together, we'll be saying to him again, we have great confidence, Lord, in your selection, in your appointment. Think of it this way, too. You know, right, we were, in a, we were a church waiting for a next pastor. Guess what? There's somebody out there waiting for a next church. Yeah. And those two will come together. I'm excited about it. And uh, uh, I, I will miss my Sunday morning drives. But uh, I know that uh, that will be the right thing at just the right time to want it. Yeah, it will be. Start out talking about how prayer is an expression of humility. It really is. And it's also an expression of anticipation. You know, Psalm 5.3 says this, In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I lay my request before you. And wait in expectation. There's that word. Prayer is an exercise in humility. And it's an exercise in expectation. In anticipation. And I anticipate that. Do you not? But not fretfully. We're okay already. We're okay already. Let us pray <laughs> together. And then we'll have a time of invitation. If you sometimes need to share your prayer concerns with somebody else then this is your opportunity to do so. I'll be here at the front with the mic off, and we, and we can pray together. Let us pray together. Lord, we do. We thank you that uh, just like you sent the rain, that you will be sending a next shepherd, and uh, not a single raindrop fell outside of your purview. And uh, uh, we are not left on our own in this process, but it's a process that we're delighted and honored and patient as we discern 
together, our next shepherd. And we thank you for caring about us so much that you will send a next shepherd. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.